All right, well, we heard this morning about some of the UIs that are coming along uh, regarding Zen, and this is one of the more interesting ones right now that Olivier is going to be telling us about, about Zen Orchestra. Thanks, Russ. So I'm here to introduce you Zen Orchestra, which is basically a web interface for Zen, and for Zen, it's for Zen plus Zappy. So here's the plan. Um, I explain first why this project, then the global design, how oh, it works, um, what we are doing now with this project, and the future. So why this project? Well, it started in 2009. I worked for a big company using Zen, the old Zen with Zen D. And um, sometimes it happens there's problems with some VMs and we cannot SSH on it. So I need to find where is the VM. But there is a lot of servers. So each time there is a problem, I need to find the VM to find where is the VM to get a console on it with XM console. So I need to, to find easily in one place to, to see where is my VM. So I start to hack something using Zendi and to put on a web page uh, something you can display every host and their respecting VM. So I search uh, something with a web interface because I like it, a global overview, and if it can make my life easier can be cool. So not only CVM but interact with them. Then I start Zen Orchestra. It was really small first, so in 2009. But it was not my main project. I've got a lot of work. Uh, I have to finish my studies, etc. So that's why the project was discontinued in 2010. As you can see here, and you heard about that before. Um, XCP is held out in 2011, and it brings Zappi. And when I saw the possibilities of Zappi, I, I saw uh, we can do really a great things with a web interface using not the old Zendi, but the new Zappi. That's why, uh, years later, I choose to reboot the project, but this time using Zappi. And it seemed a good choice because this year Zen servers was open source, so it's a great thing for us. That's the reboot. The, the main objective is to get a simple and neat GUI for Zen. And like the last time, I want to use it with web technologies and the latest. And as I said before, I want to use and leverage all the possibilities of Zappi. And for sure, uh, I want to, this project to be open source. So it's AGPL. The main difference uh, between the first ID in 2009 is this time, uh, we have a company support, which is a small company in France, my own, we are three. <laughs> but it's not a hobby anymore. It's a real project. So we drew uh, our ideal specification before starting to do something. And well, what can we expect for uh, that kind of project? Basically, we want to be manage everything from web browser, which is normal for web UE. We want it to work out of the box. When I say that, it's we want it turnkey, really. And if it cover uh, everyday administration work uh, for Zen, it, it will be great. But it's not the only thing we want. We want to do more with uh, an innovative interface, which means um, another way to see your VMs or your hosts, etc. And 
we want it also with a scalable design because uh, we thought at this time if we have a lot of clients using it, we want to be, have uh, a good performance on every client. What is not EXO? It's important because uh, it explains our position in the market. We do not want to do a clone of Zen Center. We share the goal. We want to provide an interface for using Zen every day. But it's a web application, and it's not a heavy client, a rich client. So it's different. We have a lot of possibilities. It's really another thing. And we do not want to do a big cloud manager. It's, it's not the same objective. We, we are not talking about thousand and thousand VMs. So uh, we want also to, as I said before, to be turnkey. So we do not want to install specific things or to uh, have uh, complicated things to install. We want it working really out of the box. So that's why we choose Zappi. As I say uh, just before, uh, now we've got Zen Center, which is Windows only so far. I've heard some, maybe something with Mono, maybe on Linux, I don't know. It's a rich client, and there is no persistence. Um, persistence is, uh, for, for example, when you shut down your Windows computer running Zen Center, OK, you lose. Uh, everything. You need to reboot it to have data, etc. So that is persistence. We saw uh, this morning Open Zen Manager, which is great, but it's more a Zen Center clone. It's a rich client too, and there is no persistence. And it seems the last version uh, is from 2010, so a little old. And there is a lot of projects, uh, small projects. Uh, some companies are doing specific things, but it's too small or not open source or too big, like all the cloud or OpenStack. That's why I think there is a gap for EXO. About the global design of our application, First thing, as I say, we use Zappi. Why using Zappi? It's available for Zen Server, which is basically, not just that, but basically it's Zen plus Zappi. But it works also for uh, any distribution which can run Zappi. So it can be Debian and CentOS, for example. And um, it's it's really a complete stack. You can do a lot of things with Zappi. Really a lot of things. It's not the, like the old Zen D, which it's great for basic tasks. This time you, you can do a lot of things. And another proof, it's, it's the backbone for a lot of existing management application. So it's, it's really a great thing. When I saw Zappi for the first time, uh, the, the first main point I see is the event tracking and progress with notification. That's really great for the orchestra because we just have to, to get all events we want and listen all new events without any waste of bandwidth. So by design, it's great for us. And as we talked this morning about this, we've got resource pools, storage, VM lifecycle and many more, so it's a really a good, good stack. After the choice of the Zappi, we built our architecture for Zen Orchestra, and we decide to do uh, this architecture in two parts. There's Exo Server, which is basically a daemon running every time. Uh, that's why I call persistence. There is connection to your Zen server. Uh, you can have ACLs, etc. And on the other part, there is ExoWeb, which is basically the interface. The benefits 
for this architecture. Well, you can uncouple uh, those two projects. So if we are more um, next or server specialists, uh, for example, if you um, want to manage connection to Zen server or XCP or anything like that, you can work on XO server. If you want to just modify the interface, it's another thing. And there is protocol between these two, these two parts. So if you change one of those, there's no problem. Here the graph. So all of this is Zen Orchestra. You have the clients here talking to the Exo server, and it's Exo server which is talking to XCP or Zen server or Zappy host, whatever. About the events, we just see that Zen Orchestra use events, so we listen all events and build a cache. So that's great because if a client wants an information and it's, a, it's in the cache, well, you don't have to do another call to your server. So it's bandwidth friendly. Here's an example on small Zen infrastructure. We've got one pool here, pool one, with a Zen server, can be any Zappy host, a Zen server master and two hosts in the pool, and two other servers which are not in a pool. Now, if you use Zen Center, if you want each of your clients connected to all of them, you have a lot of connection to do. This one, for example, client three, you need to connect to this one, this one, this one, etc. for the other one. So it's a lot of connection to all your servers. But with EXO, it's different by design. You've got your web client connecting to the exo, the exo daemon, which is have cache, so that's great, and the connection are managed only by exo. So less connection, it's more scalable. If you have a lot of clients, there's no problem. Exo manage it. So when we reboot the project, uh, we reboot it again with PHP. But um, frankly, uh, we have problem with PHP. Uh, there is a lot of bugs and those XML RPC libs. And some, some people are saying, well, guys, maybe PHP is not a great idea for that. And yes, why we choose PHP in the first place? Because we are familiar with, with it. But by design, it's not really a good fit for us. So we search for another thing. And we find JavaScript, and especially Node.js. It's really a good technology. It's less complex for our projects. And by design, it's, it's great for dealing with servers. So we choose this technology, and we found it's really great. Plus, it's really easy to connect with other things like a NoSQL database like Redis. So for Exo server, JavaScript is great. But not only for Exo server. We choose to redesign Exo Web 2 using great JavaScript technologies like Backbone, WebSocket, and a single page application design. And that's really great because it's lightning fast. No page loads, etc. Just one page. For the graphical user interface, we choose Twitter Bootstrap, which is which is really great. So on the entire project, we do not use PHP anymore. It's on the same language now, it's JavaScript. We saw uh, the technical design in Zen Orchestra. Now let's talk about graphical design. 
Well, it's the most challenging part for our project and our priority. Why that? Because uh, when you display a lot of information about your Xen infrastructure, believe me, there is a lot of things to display. There is a lot of things, so that's what we call data density. There are a lot of different things to display. That's what we call diversity and redundancy. So we have two choices at the moment to cope with that. Two parallel choices. We've got traditional solution. For example, just use tables. But we want it to be always light. No, not too much information in your display. Because it's a web page, and we do not want to overwhelm the user with too much information. That's a one way to deal with that. The other way is to find something different to deal with this kind of difficulties. That's why, um, for the classical design, as I say, we use table. So it's pretty simple. You've got the name of your VM, the description, the memory, the first IP address, the uptime, and action. That's not the final design, but it gives an idea. Here, it's green dots indicating your VMs are running. It's pretty much simple. On the other side, um, for the, the innovative design, we choose to use d3.js, which is really, really a great lib in JavaScript for dealing with that complexity. Uh, if you can go on the website, that's really a great, great, great lib. With that, you can display a lot of things using mixing symbols, colors, etc., for displaying a lot of data. And the good side, and we have in our small team a software agnomist. With that, we have all the, the requirement to research for innovative design. The first and simple solution, for example, to display uh, Zen infrastructure is this one. You have your pools here, and they are connected to your host. There is, it's a small example on this one, but you have pools, host, and VM. But it works for many more host or VM. Well, it's scalable for displaying information, and we can imagine other ways to add information. For example, if we fill um, our symbols with, uh, for example, CPU load or memory load, etc., we have a lot of combination possible. So it's a great field of research for us. And this, this overview uh, is currently in alpha version, but it works. So now, the current state of this project. Well, we wanted plug and play, and it's plug and play. We choose for uh, easier distribution. We install it in a Debian, and we export it uh, in an XVA, XVA appliance. So you just have to download it, to import it in your existing Zen infrastructure, to run it, it's in DHCP. So if you have the IP, you go on a browser, and that's it. You're ready to go. Five minutes. No complicated things to do, because we use Zappy, so it works. It works for, example, Zen server, but it works also for Debian plus Zappy and uh, CentOS plus Zappy, but we didn't, didn't test it now uh, with CentOS. We've got an overview panel, VM lists, VMs consoles, working in Firefox, not on every web browser because we use no VNC and it's a mess. <laughs> so it works now in Firefox, but our objective, our goal is to have VM consoles working in every browser, normal browser, 
not Internet Explorer. And we have local users and permissions. So let's see. Um, it's pulled from a real situation. Here are the dashboard. You have the four hosts running and 23 vCPU used on 20 CPUs, or the RAM, how many VMs are running, shared repository, etc. You can add a new server, and it's, you've got a, a new window here. You can connect to, in order to have admin rights and uh, to connect to a new server. It's a host view, so all your hosts with a name, description, how many memory is used on each host. So it's pretty much simple to see if you have a server with too much RAM, etc. And you've got their address, so that's cool for connect to them. We saw that just before. Simple view with all your VM. And when you click on a VM, you've got a, um, a panel with uh, the state, the name, etc. If, if you have uh, tools, access tools installed in it, uh, it's UID, etc. Classical things. And you can have the console. So that's great if you want to just have a look on your VM. You just have to start a browser go on the IP of San Orchestra, and that's OK. <coughs> you can work. It's a console view from a Windows XP. It works, too, for other OSs. Here is admin pages. Uh, you've got an admin page for servers, because we saw we can an add a server, but if we want to remove it that's no problem with that. You have just to tick and to delete. And you can manage users, create users with their permission, with the password, etc. So it's not fully implemented um, about the ACLs, but you can um, restrict basically some rights like to like rights to stop or pause, etc. for a VM. Thus, what's the next steps for this project? Well, we want to create and manage VM storage and network. So far, you can just connect to a host and see existing VM, but we want to add um, a way to create VM. We want to add an LDAP backend for connecting to your directory. We want to get the RRDs for display graphs. So it's the next step for the short term this year. And we will search another views and develop them. And if we have the time to make some distro packaging, for example, for Debian. For the next year, our main objective is to provide a stable release. And with this can come the possibility of professional support or sponsoring. We don't know uh, now, but we are thinking about it. Um, we will provide trends because of XO architecture. We, have, we are always connected, so we, uh, we can analyze this. We can do workload analysis and check RD history. So we can do really cool things with that. And there is a lot of possibilities. Uh, maybe if we want to change or add a backend for libvirt, for, for example, we can do it without changing ExoWeb. That's possible. And uh, other research projects uh, based on uh, visualization. To conclude, uh, now uh, the good news. The website drained a lot of visitors in August and from literally everywhere, so that's great. We've got um, 
I say um, 10 or 15 early users, and they are really enthusiasts. That's, it helps us really to, to fix bugs, etc. And there is a lot of expectation from, from this project. People want a web interface. And our bottleneck now is understaffing. We are only three, so our developing rate is not that great, but it's not bad. So if you want to have any information on the project, there's the main website. There's a lot of things to read there. We've got a forum, an IRC, a Twitter. And if you have any question, well, I think we've got time. So uh, you, can, you can come to, to see us or ask a question now. And we'll be available here until Friday. So if you have any question, you can go. Yes. So I was having some issues with um, the data from the VMs populating. Um, I'm running Node.js 10 stable, and uh, I, I think I checked it out from, uh, from I cloned a Git repo. And uh, uh, so some things that I think that they said that they were like, um, Work in progress or something like certain parts in the UI. Do you know what I'm? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, that's, that's why we, we prefer to to use the appliance because um, uh, we expel any problem with not that JS version, etc. Uh, we want to focus on really what's bugs on our side and not on not that JS version. So if you want to try again, I think you the better way to do it is to import the appliance on your uh, Xen infrastructure and test it again. Uh, I tried to import the uh, appliance and it didn't, it didn't work. Well, what didn't work? The appliance, it wouldn't, it wouldn't import it. Ah! Uh, <laughs> no luck. <laughs> Can you uh, use the Xen, Xen appliance and then um, hit GitHub and get the updates for the, the code? Yeah, we Does made a init the uh, script to update in Debian. So you just have to SSH and to do a service exo update, and it uh, gets from uh, Git all uh, new version, uh, avoiding re-downloading every time a new appliance. So yeah, we build a script in the appliance to update. Do you know how off the current appliance is from the, um, ba from the current head? It, it's based on Debian stable. No, no, I mean the code that's in the appliance, how, yeah. how far off is it from what you're current? The, the last version is, I think, up to date. Oh, really? Yeah, I think. The, I, I re-upload uh, when we have a lot of modification to be sure it's OK. So if you, have, if you download it today, I think you have the last version. Any other questions? Let's give Olivia a good hand. Huh? Thanks.